I encounter self-transforming elf machines, uh, which are creatures, entities, perhaps, although they're not made out of matter, they're made out of, as nearly as I can figure it out, they're made out of syntax driving light. But if what your question addresses is the issue of entities on the other side, uh, there are definitely entities on the other side uh, for me, and there seem to be such for many, many other people. I'm not in any, by any standard sensitive, so if I get entities, then they are substantial and capable of defending themselves. It's one of the most challenging parts of the whole psychedelic landscape because most people can accept the idea of disordered sensory input, recovery of traumatic memory material, so forth and so on. But what are we to do with an elf? You know, that becomes a little harder to contextualize in psychoanalytic theory, although Jung did a good job when he said autonomous elements can escape from the psyche's control and present themselves as independent entities. Um, I'm not sure he's ever seen uh, a self-transforming elf machine. It's the defining characteristic of the true DMT flash. I mean, it is not subtle. It's these things mob you like badly trained Rottweilers. They come bounding forward by the dozens, by the hundreds. They jump into your body. They jump out of your body. They, and I thought, you know, I mean, it maps to some degree over the archetype of the little people, the leprechaun, the fae, and being Irish and being Jungian, I'm willing to entertain, you know, maybe I have a special uh, relationship to this stuff. But then in the Amazon, the people using DMT that I studied in the early 70s, the reason they did it, they said, was to, t to speak with the little people. Uh, what puzzles me about my contacts with these beings is it, it conforms to, let's say, the Irish model. They are small, they live under hills, or when you're with them you have a sense that you are somehow underground. They are full of merriment almost to a manic and frightening level. It's sort of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon gone berserk. They are friendly, but play rough. In other words, it's a land of explosions and falling anvils. It's uh, like a roadrunner cartoon or something. But the overwhelming feeling is love, but I spell it L-U-V to distinguish it from the ordinary kind because it's just this kind of crazy, childish affection. And they're delighted to have me in their presence. Well, now that all sort of corresponds with the Irish model or with worldwide folklore of little creatures, little people in the woods. Mm-hmm. What's happening that is not mappable onto fairyland or leprechauns or Findhornian beings or anything like that or anything else I've ever heard of is that these entities have an agenda and it's a very curious agenda. They use a language which you see you don't you it is made out of sound in other words it's you, it, it, it is sound, but you see it in that state. And the entire point of the encounter from their perspective seems to be to teach you to do this. They want you to transform your language. They want you to speak elfish. And, you know, what? If you've never done DMT and you just smoked it and you're 30 seconds into this experience and, it's, and this is what it's come down to, uh, you wonder 
what to make of it. I've thought about this for years and years and years, and I don't know why there should be an invisible syntactical intelligence giving language lessons in hyperspace, uh, but uh, that, that certainly consistently seems to be what is happening.